James Carpenter with Country Living. Welcome to my channel and thank you for watching my videos. Okay, so I'm going to give you a little update. Uh, I know that I've produced a lot of videos without any uh, voiceover. I apologize for that, but believe it or not, between building the building, editing the videos, and so on, it's a little more difficult. Today is Saturday. I had a little bit more time on my hands. Uh, so basically, what we're doing here is William, the little guy in the red shirt, the young fella, he's putting uh, four and a half inch timber wolf screws in every one of these purlings. So here's one going in now. So the two holes you see there are either deck screws, three inch deck screws, or nails. We used kind of a combo. But we're following up with the uh, four and a half inch timber wolf screws. Now you'll notice too between each purling there's blocks absolutely not necessary but it's just the way I like to build we got Chad over here he's uh, uh, cutting out the bird mouse on some of the rafters that are going up so what Chad's doing here is we cut a uh, block out of the uh, telephone pole. We're going to put a 4x6 up there that's going to extend out to carry the rafters. So that telephone pole has come in pretty handy as far as stability for the corner of the building. The 4x6 is pressure treated. Chad just hit his finger there. That wasn't good. Alright, the block's coming out. It's that cavity is five and a half inches nice. by a little over four inches deep. Now the four four by six is obviously only four inches, but we had to be flush with the rest of the building. So there's a little bit of roughness in there. Chad's gonna take the uh, Dremel tool, clean that cavity up. So the four by six is slide in there nicely. Okay, so now we're we're getting ready to put the four by six in position. so it fits nicely in that cavity there's going to be about a four foot overhang on the front of the building so that's why that extends out there the way it does right now we're locking that four by six down with deck screws and timber wolf screws Right here we're going to uh, pull it up tight with a hammer. It's 
what Chad's doing there. He put a screw in there for leverage. He's pulling it up tight. We're pushing it in. We're putting a, a deck screw in. And again, we followed up with Timberwolf screws all the way through the top plate into the 4x4 because there's going to be a lot of pressure on that 4x6. Just having that tongue and grooved section there in that telephone pole really adds strength to the building as far as the pressure coming down on that 4x6. I know that don't look good. Them Timberwolves kind of cracked that wood, but when, once that wood dries, that'll still be pretty solid now. There's the uh, hurricane straps I'm using. They're not typical. Those are about a sixteenth of an inch thick. And I use deck screws to put them into the top plate. So it's got three inch screws going downward and inch and a half screws going through the um, rafter. Now this is a, a two by ten. It's going to go on the exterior of the building. And it's going to run parallel with the 4x6. So basically we're constructing a beam basically to support that overhang. Here we're cut, cutting off some of the blocks. Uh, the blocks were set up for a 2x4 and now we're using a 2x10 in that area. So we just had to trim them blocks off a little bit. And this extension is all pressure treated since it's going to be more, more chance of being exposed to the weather. All that pine lumber is going to be covered with metal. It should stay pretty dry. So we're going to shoot this 2x10 on there first with deck screws. And those are 3 inch. They're coated. They can hold up to that pressure treated wood or the chemicals that are in it. Now in one of the other episodes you seen me trim that telephone pole down. It, uh, it, it wasn't necessarily completely out of plumb but it extended beyond our layout so it had to be about an inch and a half of it had to be cut out. But it gave us a good flat surface to work from. And if you're wondering, you see these 2x4's that end off and then you see a gap. That's for the purlings that are going to run across the front of the building. Okay, now Chad's going to start running some timber woofs in there. That's a four and a half inch screw. They're much heavier duty than the um, 
deck screws. You know, the deck screws are nice, don't get me wrong, but these timber wolves are going to guarantee that board is going to stay in place for many a years. Chad actually made the comment when we were putting the walls up that this is the first building that I didn't have to brace the walls. It's just the way we constructed it with the uh, four by fours and the tongue and groove bottom plate. It just, once everything was screwed together, it was perfectly plumb and it stayed plumb during the whole process. We ensured that they were still plumb when we put the center rafter up just uh, for security, but it, it was right on, it was spot on. Okay, so what we're doing here is between the 4x6 and the 2x10, we're putting uh, blocks in there. The blocks are pressure treated lumber, by the way. William's cleaning up. We're getting ready to call it a day. Tomorrow's Sunday. We're going to work on it again tomorrow. We've actually worked on it every day except for yesterday. Yesterday it was below freezing. It was freezing rain and sleet. So the job site's all cleaned up from today's activity. I wanted to just go through now. I, I know a lot of you have been watching the videos and you haven't really heard how it's being constructed, but I want you to look how plumb that wall is. Look down through there. I tried to, yeah, right there. It's perfectly plumb. All those blocks just tie everything in. The timber wolf screws holding the purlings on. A double bottom plate. Anchor bolts in the concrete. My own style hurricane straps on the rafters. Like I said earlier, they're about a sixteenth of an inch thick galvanized metal. Held down with three inch deck screws and inch and a half screws into the rafters. Now there's a, another shot looking down that end of the building. I tried to hold that camera there so you can see how plumb it is. Not that you don't trust me, but it is. this is good quality workmanship. You know, there's a, a lot of Amish in the area, but I have a tendency to think maybe I overbuild even compared to the Amish and the quality of the workmanship that Chad and I are putting into this build is phenomenal now those are the uh, railroad ties we did in one of the very first episodes when we were doing the foundation work for the poor those are held in by um, rebar and then obviously the landscape will fill in around it and that will hold it in place too. But I'm leaving those there so that when I mow, I don't have to weed eat close to the building. <clears throat> this is where the man door will be. The header's not not in yet obviously once we get the door in position we'll figure out where we want that header and 
there's a I think you can see the blocks yeah you can see the blocks that went in the beam there so you got the 4x6 and the 2x10 and we're going to cap both sides with I believe a 2x8 I got to go to Home Depot after I get finished with this video and pick up more lumber that's where we tongue and groove that 4x6 into that telephone pole This, the, the garage door obviously is not framed in yet, but once we get the rafters all the way over, we'll start framing the garage door in. There's the uh, lag bolts that go all the way through the concrete down to the gravel, so they're locked in really well. The 4x4s, um, four you can see that tongue and groove top plate we put over, over top of the pressure treated bottom plate which just locked those 4x4s four in there and that's what held those walls so plumb they didn't need any support because they were basically just held by the base and the screws that we put in it okay those are those are 4x4s on the top there, they get cut off later with a sawzall. Those telephone poles get cut down later. We're just leaving them long for the time being. We don't know exactly where we want to be. Now here's another shot of the, I'm calling them hurricane straps, but they're really just an L bracket. A little heavier gauge metal than the actual hurricane straps and I put one on each side of each rafter and again they're held down with three inch deck screws it's pretty rigid all right those are two by tens and they're not only drywall screwed to the uh, existing building but they're also held with timber with screws and in the existing building those wall studs are full length they run clear from the header all the way down to the floor so those are a solid 2x12 no 2x6x12 I'm sorry and there she is Thank you for watching.